Hello everyone, in today's video we will be doing a quick walkthrough and installation of some electrical roughing products. This is a bunkie with two small bedrooms above a garage and uh, as you can see all the wires have been pulled and the ceiling and walls have been insulated. Um, the customer have re has requested that we install a receptacle for a TV up here where there's going to be some counter space and a small bar fridge below. Also we haven't installed the pod light plates for the drywallers but we will be doing that even though there's already poly and there's already blowing insulation. I will add a small video of how we do that after this process is completed. And uh, I will also show you some of the wiring and uh, how we like to do it. Most of the time we keep all our wires straight. We use a laser to drill the holes and we vapor boot all our exterior receptacle boxes and lighting, switching. Anything that is exterior has to be vapor boot. And also we uh, try to keep all our wiring neat. Here we have some uh, of the new Milwaukee um, staples. I got the, the stapler after uh, a few days of starting roughing in this place and I started using them. I love that thing. I love Milwaukee tools. Also at the end of this video, um, I will share what I would like to do when it comes to uh, tool giveaways. So please subscribe, like the video, comment below anything you would like to see and stay tuned for the tool giveaway. So as I mentioned before, the customer would like to add a receptacle in this location for a TV above this counter. So we will mount the receptacle in the middle of the wall space and also a 68 and 3 quarter height from the floor so if they're putting a big TV they can center it and um, not have any issues um, with the wire just being too low or too high. Uh, we will use a retrofit box with the ears. This is a 2104 LRB. It's one of my favorite boxes because it's welded edges and there's no screws so if you have to put it on drywood you can just cut the perfect hole and push it in. Um, we're not cutting drywall here we're mounting it with uh, 1060 box bars. So we will move the ears back half inch so when the drywallers uh, cut around it uh, the box will still be flush with the drywall. Now it's ready. Uh, we can prepare our drill or driver with a green rubber sun. And I say a green rubber sun because we're using number five screws by one, so five by ones. Very small screws are very good. And uh, we'll place the box in 1060 bar. I like lining it up to the middle. Um, that's rough there. It's pretty good. And there goes the screw. Place one. And then we use our level. Pretty good. What level there? And still good. So then we will place the second one on top. I also like putting the level on the second one so that way it's perfectly straight and the box lights 
evenly without issues. It's always important. It's always important to take your time and make sure your job is uh, precise. It helps down the line when you're close to finishing your job. Now we're going to we're going to align the box to the center of the space. I measured earlier and it was 81 inches from corner to corner. So the box has to sit at 40 and a half. Perfect. Line up the box to 40 and a half and then to hold it in place. Um, we use our side cutters and we sort of just nick on the box bar on either side of the ears and it will trap the bar uh, the box in place uh, as you can see here we have a wire for a, this small bedroom receptacle is the end of the line which is convenient for us so what we are going to do is use our Milwaukee stapler because you can put one, one wire on top of the other and use one staple to hold them in place. Uh, we like doing that instead of side by side on a small wall like this or a thin wall. It's a two by four wall and the code in Ontario dictates that you should have an inch and an eighth on either, a, either edge of uh, the two by four for the wire. So we're going to use our new Milwaukee, Milwaukee uh, wire stapler and just sit both wires on top of each other and place a staple on it. So we'll remove the previously installed staples with our side cutters. It's quite easy. Come out pretty, pretty smooth when uh, they're installed in a uh, two by four made of actual pine the LSL uh, type of wood that compress um, chemically made new material is uh, so very hard to to work with sometimes so right here we have a piece of 14.2 uh, Romex we'll leave plenty so we can have our loops and uh, here's the Milwaukee wire staple it I actually love it very much uh, um, I got it not too long ago so I haven't been able to test it um, on a rough end like a full rough end I like how it self regulates uh, the depth for the wires it doesn't crush them it's uh, I gotta tell you Milwaukee tools are amazing So we'll just line up our wires and keep stapling all the way down. It's perfect. Now we're going to remove one of these knockout fillers at the bottom of the box. We can change to a number two Robertson. And back the screw out a little bit. And put a wire through. Trim all the wires so we don't have a lot. But it's important to have a nice loop in case something happens. You have plenty to work with. I always like leaving a very big loop, especially in additions in case they don't like where it was placed and uh, they want to relocate it. Apologize for the noise caused by the stapler if it's too loud.
We'll trim our wire out a bit. It's plenty. And I'm just gonna roll it a little bit and push it to the box. And there you go. One of the tasks uh, that we were assigned for today are completed and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. After this, I have to put poly plates and uh, I will show you how I do it in an already insulated uh, ceiling with uh, poly installed. It's not that hard, it just takes a little time and it can be sometimes a little tedious because you are trying to make sure that all the blowing insulation doesn't fall in your face. See you in a minute. So the following process is to measure the power lights in the space. Uh, we have our drawings, our drawings here. We have uh, three and a half inch uh, light line plates that we're gonna mount in the ceiling. And we have uh, Iverville VV2's uh, vapor boots. I will show you how I installed this uh, in this insulated ceiling. But first we will use our Milwaukee 360 plane laser. Um, it's one of my favorite tools to uh, lay out power lights. I will show you why. So in our drawing, uh, we are seeing the measurement from the wall is 22 inches from that wall and 24 inches from the back wall. And um, yeah, it's basically 22 by 24. So we'll mark that on the floor and then we will center our laser on it. So we'll use our Pika pencil and mark 22 inches. Or in this case, 22 and a half, because you have to account for drywall. And then we can mark 24 and a half from this edge. So right here we have an X. We'll put our uh, laser guide that we receive with our Milwaukee laser. It helps on this process. Appreciate the carpenters leaving uh, chalk lines on the floor. It definitely helps. Four and a half. So this is where one of our pala is supposed to sit. And then what I like to do is I line up this, um, this axe or this center line on the 360 plane laser with that line over there. And uh, that will give us a square location up there. It is uh, the, the center spot for where the pala is supposed to sit. Um, so now I will transition from uh, marking the rest of the floor into installing the pala on plate on a finished uh, ceiling that is already being insulated. Um, We'll see you in a minute. So as I mentioned before, the next process is to cut into the poly and insert our paper boot. And in this space, we will make sure that the poly sits in here and it's not in direct contact with the insulation. So one of the tricks that I like to use is to cut a roughly four by four um, square in the poly. You grab a knife and uh, just cut away carefully and try not to make a mess. Once that you have your square, 
put your knife away. As you can see, I already pre-cut my pieces of uh, talk tape. We will grab the paper boot, place it in there, just wiggle it up, and uh, just tape it now. Make sure it's uh, well placed, the tape, and it seals in any air gaps. It's a little tricky sometimes and tedious, but with practice, um, it can become somewhat easy to do. I'm not a fan of doing this, but when the builder decides to strap the ceilings, um, well, this is the per the. Uh, next uh, process that I have to um, use uh, you have to adapt sometimes in this uh, construction uh, projects so as you can see now we have a vapor boot in place where there wasn't one before <sighs> thanks to our beautiful Milwaukee laser now I can place the poly plate lined up with our laser lines and hold it in place our wire is now nowhere near our uh, location, but we will relocate it there in a minute by just opening where, where the wire is uh, placed right now. We'll just remove that tape, stick our hands in and bring it to the uh, vapor boot that we just installed. Sweet, it's on the center, love it. And that's the, the process that I used to bring, uh, to install the vapor boot where there wasn't one before. Now the drywaller can route around our poly plate and uh, we'll have no issues afterwards. Thank you for watching and uh, you guys have a great day. Now for the tool giveaway, I will say this, once that I have reached 1000 subscribers and once that I have uh, completed the requirements of um, monetization, which is 4,000 public watch hours. I will give to one of the 1,000 subscribers uh, one of these uh, Milwaukee lasers. Um, uh, they're valued at $700 Canadian, the kit with a 4 amp battery and the charger. So we'll just put it on the um, Google random. It's, uh, chooser and uh, one lucky subscriber will go away home with this or a tool of their choosing uh, with the equivalent value again thank you for watching please subscribe and have a wonderful day